Welcome to the 2024 Base Star. This is a 3014 floor plan, and we're going to go all the way through the coach and around it, and we're going to do a walkthrough for you so you understand the systems and how they work. So if you come up here to the front, we'll start here in the cockpit of the coach. Starting with our leveling system, we have an equalizer, and the equalizer um, will deploy the jacks so that you can level your coach. And to do that, you first have to turn the ignition on to get power. The power indicator light will come on. So you have to turn your key uh, all the way to the second uh, click, and then you'll have power when you press the power button. You can see all your LED lights come on. Now your ignition is on and you can level. But if you don't have the parking brake set, it'll give you the a warning light that you have to engage the parking brake. So just remember, if you see that light come on, you'll have to engage the parking brake before you can level. So to auto level, just simply press the auto level button. You can hear the pump motor and the pump motor is sending uh, fluid to all the jacks and jacks are going down and that will level the coach. You'll also hear that slight warning uh, beeping and the lights flashing. Um, that's just telling you that, um, you know, the jacks are going down, so. Now you can start to feel the coach move a little bit as it levels. If at any time you decide to stop the auto level process, you can just press the auto level again and everything will shut off. Or let's say that you decided you want to be in control of the leveling. You can use these four uh, up and down arrows and you can actually level the coach manually if you want. But right now we're in the auto level mode, so it's doing it all automatically for you. So once the coach is level, you can hear the warning um, beeping stop and our coach is now level. And uh, with the coach level, um, we can uh, turn off the power and uh, first turn off the ignition and hit the power and the reverse order of the process would be to retract the jacks. So if I want to retract the jacks, I have to turn the ignition back on, make sure my parking brake is engaged, and then I would just hit retract all. So once I do that, retract all, you can hear the pump come back on. And now the all of the four jacks are retracting. So all of our lights have gone out. We're no longer in the operating mode. The LED light went out. So we can power it off. Just turn the ignition off and press the power button and our jacks are now retracted. Obviously we want to make sure if we're going to run the slide rooms out uh, that we are uh, somewhat in a level position of the coach before we extend the jacks. Um, and we'll talk about uh, checking the reveals 
and that process uh, before we run the slide rooms out in a little bit. But moving forward, uh, we have another cluster of controls here. Um, the big pad here is to place your phone. Uh, that's a charger for your phone. The battery boost uh, is exactly what it says. If the um, battery is low and you can't start the vehicle, um, we would just press this button down and hold it. And after about 30 seconds of pressing and holding that button, then you would turn the ignition on and that helps a charge from the house batteries to the chassis batteries so that you could start the coach. Once you have started the coach, you can release the battery boost button and uh, the chassis batteries will uh, be charging from the alternator. Um, if you need to use the battery boost button to start your coach, you need to check your chassis battery. Just to the right of that is our generator, uh, gen start, switch, and stop. So to start the generator, I just press button, hold it for a couple seconds. You can see the light flash. That means that it's priming to start. Once it starts, I can release the button. So I can, I just heard the generator start. I release the button um, and of course uh, with the generator on it supplies 120 volts uh, to the coach so that I can uh, operate any 120 functions in the coach. Um, when I'm finished uh, running the generator um, I just press stop and the generator stops. Just to the Right of that, we have the overhead fans, high, off, and low. So with the overhead fans on, that's the high position for the speed, that's the off position, and that's low. The overhead fans are uh, situated in the top corners of the windshield area, and that's where they're controlled right here. Uh, the dome light is on and off here. Just above that, we have our mirror control. So our rear view mirrors on the left and the right are 12 volt controlled here to adjust the mirror. There's a motor in the mirror. You turn it to L for left, and then you can adjust it up and down or left and right. When I'm done adjusting the driver side mirror, which is the left, then I would switch it over to right and adjust the passenger mirror here. When I'm finished adjusting, I just put it in the center position so that in case you bump these, it won't move either mirror. Now there's an additional switch here at the top. This, as you notice, is not lighting up because I don't have the ignition on. But if I had the key on, that turns the mirrors heater on. So if I press that again, you see that lights up and turns uh, the mirror heat pad on the back side of the mirror so it can defrost or can defog the mirrors. Um, it's not instantaneous. So once you turn that on, uh, it will take several minutes before you start seeing uh, the mirror uh, clear from frost or fog. So when you're done with that, just turn it off and you can turn the ignition off. Just above the phone charger, you have your emergency flashers. If you press that, you can see on the dash here, that's our indicator that our emergency, emergency flash is on. Press it again and they will go out. There is no need to have the ignition on. When I press the emergency hazard button, they will always come on whether I have the ignition on or off. Just to the right side of that button, I, you can see another uh, lane mitigation warning uh, button. In order for that to work, I have to have the key on or uh, be 
uh, operating the coach. Um, when you press that button, you can see here that the lane keeping system right now is off. So uh, that button is going to turn it on. So now it's on and I can adjust the sensitivity of that and we'll show you that in a minute. Um, just to the right of that, we have our vent for air conditioning and heating in the cockpit area. Um, and then going over here to the uh, clusters, we have the tachometer, um, engine warning light. Um, up at the top, we have our oil pressure, our temperature, the engine temperature is here. Um, we have fuel and number of miles to empty just above the fuel gauge. The indicator is showing in blue um, that we have a quarter tank and our voltage here um, that is for the chassis battery voltage so let's take a quick look at uh, the screens um, if you'll if you notice here at the top there's one two three four uh, tabs that you can scroll to here on the left side of the dash so if i scroll left it will move all the way to the left. Scrolling right does the same thing. It moves all the way over to the other tab. So uh, refer to your owner's manual to make these adjustments or see the other views. But um, just starting at the left, you're going to see your trip, fuel economy, um, and configuration screen. Here's trips one and two and fuel history. And as I scroll into any one of those and press the OK button, you'll see here that it goes to the fuel economy. So whenever you choose a screen and then you scroll to your choice and press the OK, it'll give you another screen to view for those settings. Here's my vehicle information. Um, again, if I press OK on any one of these maintenance monitor, it shows oil life. Um, scroll back up, engine information. If I tab over to the last tab, I've got my settings. These settings are for the pre-collision cruise and lane keeping systems. Um, the advanced settings are also here for your uh, vehicle and display setups. You can change the uh, units uh, from uh, US to metric if you need to. And just below that, we have our uh, miles, um, which gear we're in when we switch gears. And then we have our bright and dim on our lights. Um, also, it shows whether we're using our um, exterior lights um, on and off, along with the temperature. Just to the right of that is our mileage, uh, mile per hour indicator. And you'll notice here this uh, brake light is in red because we have our parking brake engaged. If I disengage the parking brake, that light will go off. Okay, so moving down uh, below our clusters here, we have traction control. And you'll notice here um, if I have the key on and I press the traction control, it turns on, press it again, and the traction control is off. To the right of that, we have a dimming switch. Uh, on the left is dim, and on the right, you can see if I go towards the right one, then that makes my instrument cluster brighter. The center circular button here that you rotate is for your headlights. The first indicator is parking lights. You can see here as a green light or off. Parking light green and then as you go to your headlight you can see the headlight excuse me that would be fog light that would be headlight second one. The dimmer switch is here. You can see the dimmer switch come on from the turn signal control. 
to turn them back off, just rotate left and you can see they'll go out. You can see on the top here of your miles, the traction control is off. As soon as I turn that back on, it'll show traction control on. Just below the traction control, we have a 12 volt plug for a charger. This is the old style plug uh, for cigarette lighter style. And to the right of that, we have another USB charger plug. That's what I said, though. Yeah, but you said then cigarette lighter I said style. Style, yeah, yeah not for a cigarette. Okay. Not a outlet. Okay. Cigarette lighter. All right. So we'll just go over that again. So this is a 12 volt outlet charger, and we have another USB charger here. Just below, uh, near my left foot is the parking brake. The parking brake has to be engaged in order to operate the equalizer uh, for leveling the coach, our jacks. To release the parking brake, I have a lever here that I can feel. You may not be able to see it here, but it's just above the parking brake. There's a lever that I can reach and pull back. So once I engage the parking brake, push it down, to disengage, just reach under the dash, you'll feel it, just pull back and the parking brake releases. Just to the right of that is our main brake for the coach braking system. You can hear it engage, it's a power brake. And of course, as our left or right of that is our accelerator pedal. Moving uh, up, to the dash on the left side of the column. I'll move over here so you can take a look. Here on the left, you'll see a lever that you can pull down. Okay, so if I pull that lever down, now I can tilt the wheel. I can telescope it. And once I get it set where I want, I can push this back up and that locks it into place. So down is unlock, and then you make your adjustments and then pushing it up locks it back into that position. Our vehicle information cluster is here. We talked about earlier. It's displayed here for each tab that you can scroll left and right. Below that is our set uh, for our cruise control, resume, on and off, our horn, and just to the left here, this is our dimmer switch we talked about earlier and our turn signal. So left and right turn signal. We also have the wiper washer here. Pressing that will make the wiper washer come on and fluid spray. We can adjust up and down for the amount of delay um, on the wipers here. And then uh, again, that pressing that button is just for the wiper wash spray. Over on the right side, this is the lever um, that we have for our gear indicator. So if we turn engine on, and then we look at our display for our gear, you can see reverse, neutral, and drive or I can shift it down into the lower gears here. P is park. I have plus or minus and a tow haul uh, button here for towing. If I'm pulling a trailer, you can see it. When I press the button, the tow haul button comes, uh, illuminates here just beside the park indicator. And then I can go up or down uh, for minus or plus for that towing. Just to the front of that, there is a microphone. The microphone connects to your phone. 
through either Apple CarPlay or Android. You'll need to plug your phone into this USB. This USB connects to this radio. I've got mine plugged in here. So if I take the cable, let's turn the engine off here, plug it in. You can see that it connects. I, I had uh, tried to make a call earlier, but yes, it's on CarPlay. And now I can go to Maps um, and I can uh, put my destination or route in um, or go to Music, um, set up my favorites, look at my contacts, go to my voicemail. Anything that you do, you typically do on your phone, you can now do on the bigger screen uh, with your phone um, either uh, here or in a convenient place um, near that'll reach your cord. If I want to turn the radio on, if I'm not using my phone or making a call, or I, or I don't need the navigation there, I can go uh, to my modes here or my home screen, press the radio button on and off here. Okay, so now I can press the mode button or home button. I can press the arrow forward or back uh, to go to whichever source I want to just by touching the screen. You'll notice here there's two zones for my speakers. Uh, zone two isn't used in this coach, only zone one. If I turn zone one off, the speakers won't work. So. Um, to make the radio um, or any device I plugged in here have the speakers working, you have to have this highlighted in yellow or your speakers won't play. So here's my volume control here. I can choose radio, Sirius XM, let's go back to mode here and band. Once I choose my band, I can then uh, adjust uh, to whatever radio frequency here. This is the equalizer for tuning the radio. So for tuning the radio, I can adjust it here. Select AM or FM. The equalizer settings are here. And then I have a keypad so I can actually adjust or tune the radio into the exact channel that I decide here. If you want a Bluetooth to your phone, there's your Bluetooth and gear icon for that. You need to plug your device in in order for the radio to um, play either the Android or the CarPlay. This button just below the screen is to make a call. If, I, if I'm going to make a call, I have to I obviously have to be plugged in. There's an additional plug here. If you You see here there's a little SD card that you can insert here. Over on this side is an additional USB port for charging. So if I'm at the home screen here, I can choose mode, but I have to press it to scroll. If I choose camera, my camera will come on and now I can select camera here manually, rear, side, or when I have the turn signal on right or left, it automatically selects those cameras.
There's left and right and rear. Why is that not? It always says rear, but it's left and right. Let's select camera. So when you select the camera, it will move to the next display, even though it says rear. And it automatically goes to right when you turn your turn signal on to the right or left. Back to the home screen, I can choose USB, Bluetooth, Bluetooth audio, And pressing the mode button again gets me back to the radio or Sirius at XM. All right, below our radio and beside our camera control, we have our shade. That's our front shade here in the front window, up and down. If you notice there in the center of the screen or center of the window, that is our lane mitigation system um, and that can be adjusted here in the dash as we showed earlier if we have our ignition on the shade will not go down below halfway point even if i press the shade button to go down it won't until the key is off so i have to have my key off in order for the shade to go all the way back down that's a safety feature that we build in. Just to the right of our shade switch is our HVAC, HVAC fan controls, recirculation button, and the snowflake is for the air conditioning on and off, and then our temperature adjust, warmer or cooler. There's the adjustment for all the positions here. If we turn that on, you can see that an LED light will come on. When I turn the fan on to A speed, you can see there's a small LED light that comes on. I have the snowflake depressed. If I press it again, the snowflake goes off or the LED light goes off and my air conditioning is off. Press it again, it comes back on. Recirculate is another amber LED light. If I want the air in the dash cockpit area to recirculate through the air conditioning, then I have to press that and that LED light will come on for recirculating. That keeps any air in the coach that you want to have cooled. Helps cool it faster if it's in recycling mode or heating. If you don't have that depressed, you're going to get some of the outside air coming in when you're operating either in heat or cool mode. Zero is just off. So between the driver and passenger seats, we have a cockpit table. The cockpit table can be folded out and up. There's a release mechanism here. Just push that over and then that releases so you can move it towards you, lift up, pull back, and then this folds down. And that's your cockpit table. To retract it, same procedure in reverse. And then you have to unlock the lever, push it forward. You'll see there's locking tabs here. There's four of them for the engine cover to access the engine. To the right of the passenger seat, we have additional charging for your phone. 
interior light here. USB and 120 volt. Cargo light switch on and off. Fire extinguisher. And above that, we have our ceiling control lights for, and for the bathroom and bedroom accent and the accent lights all controlled here. We have an additional patio light here. Uh, the shades are all manually controlled for up and down. Uh, the window lock is here. Up is release. And now you can slide the window. And back. And then lock it again. So for the passenger seat, there are a couple of adjustments up here. This one is for the footrest release. When I pull back, then the footrest will release and come out. To rotate the seat into the living room area, there's a lever on this side on the right that I have to pull back and release. Then I can rotate my seat all the way around. We'll show you where it's at here. It's right under the skirt here. So you can see the release lever there. So once I get the seat out in the position I like, I can rotate it into the living room area and then this is where I would use the lever on the left if I wanted to operate the footrest. Just push the footrest back in when you're finished. And then you can rotate it back the other way by doing the same procedure. Pull back and rotate. And here it lock into place. The other adjustment for the seat back is just on the right here for adjusting your back. The armrest will automatically adjust when you adjust your seat back or level. So the driver's seat adjustments are here. Uh, it is electric for forward and reverse. And we also have tilt back, forward. The other adjustment for the seat is the seat back. And the armrests go with the seat back and stay level as you move it forward or back. And those are the two adjustments for the driver's seat. At the front, you'll notice you've got three overhead cabinets and they are all storage. Above the entrance door, you have our central control panel. Uh, starting at the left, you have your Dometic water heater and you'll notice there's a small icon below each one. This is the electric element on and off and water heater LP on and off. If you turn the switch on for the LP and the ignition fails, this light will come on. When you turn the electric one on and off, uh, you don't get that indicator. Below that is your battery disconnect. Your battery disconnect is on when you see the red light. If you turn the battery disconnect off, that light will go out. In order to have lights in the coach and 
these functions to work, the battery disconnect has to be turned on. To the right of our water heater controls, we have the awning light. Uh, the LED strip for the awning can be turned on and off here. Below that, we have our steps. That means the exterior steps override. So we can make the steps stay out in the extended position. When we close the entrance door, they'll just stay out. That is the override. If we want the steps to go out and in with the door closing or opening, then we don't have this override turned on. At the top center, you'll see there is a WineGuard television control for the TV antenna over the air. If you turn that on, you'll see it going to a search mode. And then it tells you how many channels that it picked up. So we have 13 channels that it can tune the television to. You can make fine tune adjustments to your antenna by rotating it to the left or right. You can press the search button at the top if you want to rescan for more channels or when you come to a new location, you want to search and find new channels because the ones that you had perhaps in that distant location before, you're not going to pick up those channels. So there's your search and it will go into a search and find channels for those lo local areas that you're in. Okay, so if you notice as that circles around, the green lights are moving towards the right. Now we're near the top. The search looks complete. Now it's going the opposite direction. and we found nine channels. This is only to be turned on when you're watching over the air TV. If you're wanting to watch cable, you wanna make sure this is off. If this is turned on and you turn your television to the cable position, this won't let you view the cable. The cable is only viewable if this is off. So make sure this is off if you want to watch cable. If you're plugged into um, park cable, that needs to be off. Once you want to go back to over the air TV, just turn it back on and you can watch over the air. To the right of that is your power control system. This is a precision circuits panel control. It allows you to select the shore cord available power here in the select mode. You can scroll through. You can see what service you're plugged into here and what is being powered up. So right now we are plugged into 50 amp. If you're plugged into 30 amp, it will, also, it will also automatically select 
the 30 amp or the 50, but if you are only plugged into a 15 or 20 amp, then you have to make that selection here in the window. What this does is it helps load shed appliances in your coach so that you don't trip any breakers. So this would be adjusted to or selected to a 15 or 20. It automatically will find the 30 or 50. But if you're on that lower um, power supply coming into your coach through the cord, you want to make sure and select those lower numbers, 15 or 20, and that will help your control panel load shed devices off so you don't trip breakers in the half bath. The Xantrex is a charging system that helps keep your batteries charged. It also will give you power in the kitchen for the appliances that need to operate when you're dry camping. It's an inverter that will keep your refrigerator and microwave running. Uh, those breakers are located on the sub panel in your half bath. And those adjustments can be made here and it can be turned on and off here as well. The screen shows you uh, the voltage of the batteries and what's going on as you scroll through The awning control to the left of that is extend and retract. If you don't want the control to be on, just turn it off, and then the extend and retract will not operate at all. To the left of that, you have your slide out. Your slide out in or out. In is retract, out is extend. You want to be sure that your coach is in a level position. When you come to park and you want to run your slide out, you want to make sure that the reveal around the entire edges of the Z trim and the reveal are not touching. So you would go outside of your coach inspect the slide room distances or gaps on the top and bottom before you operate this or extend it. If you're not in a position where it's level enough, you want to move your coach into a more level area. Then operate this out after you extend the room is when you put your jacks down. And and finish the leveling process. It's the reverse of that when you bring your slide room in. So with your television, you have your remote control. And to select over the air channels, you have to program them with the television antenna turned on, or you won't get any reception on over the air or cable. So you have to go into the setup function for your television so if you press the home screen button right there in the center, you can see down here at the bottom, you go over to the gear icon, select that, and then go scroll down to broadcasting, uh, select that, and then you'll have to auto program. So select that. It says press start to search and store channels. So that's what you'll need to do at each new location that you're camping. So press start and you're on air channels. So press that and it will scan to find all the channels in the area that you're parked. So now we've found 40 channels after our scan is complete. We can either choose scan again or close. Uh, we've got 40 channels, that's plenty. So I'm just gonna hit close. Now the same process needs to be done with the antenna turned off if you wanna search for cable channels. 
So we have to do the exact same process, but we choose cable if we want to find all the channels for our cable. Uh, but again, you want to make sure the air antenna is off or you won't be able to view the cable. When you're finished and you've done all of your scanning, you can just go back and press the home button here and you're ready to watch television. So here at the dinette, we have additional lighting controls, uh, starting at the top for ceiling, uh, seating, our wall light, our accent lights, and uh, we can go high or low for dimming. Above that, we have additional storage in these three cabinets here. Our manual shade and our windows crank in and out on both sides. In this cabinet and this one, you can see there are controls. This is a Wi-Fi Ranger router. The Wi-Fi Ranger password is here on the label and it's Velcroed in place. When we open the audio visual cabinet, we can see the satellite prep is here. Also the connections for your satellite and or your DVD are here along with the 120 volt plug-ins and the splitter is here. So if you're adding satellite or DVD player, this is the cabinet you would put those devices in and then connect it um, through the conduit up on your roof if you're connecting your satellite. Just below that, we have additional drawers for storage. Below the seating, we have pull out drawers here on both sides. The table is a pull out. You can extend it and add another leaf, which is stored underneath the bed in the bedroom. And to remove just the same thing, just pull it out. And clip it back into place. So you'll notice here on the ceiling we have two sets of vents. The vents on the passenger side all have filters. Uh, these filters need to be cleaned regularly. You can grab a hold of this vent, hold the louver down, and take the filter out and clean it with um, air, compressed air, blow it out. And then you can hand wash it in warm, soapy water and then let it air dry. Put it back in place and then reinsert. Um, all of these filters are going to be removed in the same way going back. The louvers on this side are the discharge louvers for the air conditioning and for the heating pump, the heat pump. So these don't need to be removed necessarily. Moving back, we have our smoke detector, smoke alarm. It can be tested. Um, you'll notice here a small LED light that's flashing. Um, that's just an indicator light that it is um, powered up and working. To test it and see if the alarm sounds, you can press in the center and that tells you that the alarm is operational. LED light tells you it's powered up. If you don't see the LED light or you press here and you don't get the signal for alarm, then you want to check the battery. Just above our theater seating, we have additional storage here in these three overhead cabinets. This is the sensor 
for the temperature control in the front zone. That's uh, going up to the front air conditioner for room temperature sensing here. Have our manual shade with our window crank out, open and close. And the theater seating is their storage room, a USB plug here, cup holders, and footrest and recline all in one control. Just push in to store it and locks into place. Moving into the kitchen, we have our overhead cabinets here. Inside the overhead cabinet, you'll find your Ford information for your chassis. You'll also find your Numar paperwork, and this includes all of your appliances, electrical, exterior, heating, air conditioning, and plumbing paperwork, uh, and warranty registration forms that you should go over along with your owner's operator's manual. Um, additional information on your coach for your uh, colors, uh, what we painted um, on the exterior, model and serial information uh, here on this tag. There is a plug here. This one goes over and plugs the microwave in here. Just below that, you get your kitchen sink with removable covers. Telescoping wand for your sprayer. Hot and cold. Just to the left here is your range top. Ignition is here. Exterior back backlighting is there. To light, you just turn it to the setting uh, where it says light, and then just press here. We don't have any LP in the coach now. This folds up and down to cover it. There's additional drawer space here. Your extra keys and remote controls along with touch-up paint are typically in this drawer. You'll notice this wrench is for your house filter. Um, that's the exterior wrench uh, when you're changing your house uh, filter outside in the water compartment. More cabinet space below. Drain. And microwave. The microwave accessories are all taped into place for transit, so you'll have to remove the packaging and the tape. Just refer to your owner's operator's guide for your controls. There's a couple warning uh, stickers or decals on the side here that talk about um, open flames or um, if you are having any questions on the range top, just refer to those. Your refrigerator is a Dometic. It is a electric refrigerator, so it has a compressor. Uh, the controls are all here at the top. So the on and off for the refrigerator is here. And the temperature settings are here for the upper cabinet and the lower cabinet. So if we press the upper freezer compartment, we can adjust the freezer temperature lower, or I should say colder, five is the highest number. 
if we go to the lower compartment, then we can do the same thing. We can adjust those temperatures here. Just to the left of the refrigerator, we have additional storage for the pantry area. You'll notice there's a vent on the floor here. That's for the forced air furnace, and that's located in the mid coach area. This is our fantastic vent control with speeds up and down and our rain sensor override. To operate the fantastic vent, we just press up and then we can adjust the speeds of that fan. See, it's slowing down because I'm adjusting the speed to go down. And then when I'm finished, I can just press the down and it closes. If for some reason there was moisture on the rain sensor and you couldn't get it to open, you can override the rain sensor or any moisture that might be on the sensor just by pressing the and holding down the down button for a few seconds, you'll notice the LED light comes on for the rain sensor being off. So that turns your rain sensor off so that you can actually operate the fan even if it was a slight rain outside you could turn it on and uh, and operate it the same way when you want to turn the rain sensor back on just hold that down arrow for a few seconds and you'll notice the rain sensor led light goes out located mid coach is our 10 inch monitor panel for the functions that you can control in your coach it's a touch screen to wake it up. You just touch it once and uh, the screen shows up here. Uh, you'll see they have uh, the selections uh, here at the bottom for each icon. Uh, starting at the left here is your home screen. At the home screen, it's gonna give you uh, your basic uh, levels of your fresh gray black tank and LP if you have it, LP tank. Um, you can control your water pump and you can turn your lights on from this page. You can also monitor and watch where your house uh, battery and chassis battery voltages are. When you turn a function on or off, that press of that button to turn the water pump on, in this case, highlights that switch in red. So any switch that's highlighted in red uh, will uh, come on and uh, light up. The only ones that don't light up are the ones on the lights, the lighting controls. Anything else, if we press the button, it will go and change to a red color. Um, for instance, if we go to the AGS, which is our automatic generator starter, if we want that to be on, that function has to be turned on here with the um, on off icon and it has to be red and same with any of the other buttons if you want those to be set up uh, they will um, be highlighted in red so moving on to the a to the hvac uh, function same thing if we want those functions to be operating in the living room and we want to control those we have to highlight that area red first, and then we're controlling that part of the uh, coach. In this case, we're setting out the living room. We can adjust the temperature up and down here, and the mode we can turn on and off. We can go through a setup, uh, and we can run a program uh, for the air conditioner. Uh, we can set times uh, that we want it to operate, um, we can set the week. Uh, at the lighting function again here, we can scroll to which uh, room in the coach we want to turn on and off, and then we can just press those buttons to turn it on and off. And that is the general overview for the touch panel. If you refer to your owner's operator's manual, uh, there will be more details on how to go through some of those settings and change them. Um, if you need to. So we're going to move into the restroom, the bathroom, the half bath here. You have a Dometic uh, toilet. It's manually operated. 
to flush, you just press the foot pedal down and it flushes. Above that, you've got our storage cabinet, our lighting control. Additional storage here, medicine cabinet and interior light. Ceiling control, lighting for the vanity. We can uh, turn our water pump on and off here. Uh, back lighting can be turned off for the panel, as well as uh, high and low for dimming. We have a 120 volt outlet here. It's uh, GFCI protected. Sink, hot and cold water. We have a lock for the slider door here on the shower. So for travel, you want to make sure that's latched and locked. And of course, you have our shower here um, with hot and cold um, on and off and uh, removable uh, shower head there. Down below here, we have additional storage. The water lines are colored. Red is hot. Blue is cold. To unlock and close the door, just press down and pull the door closed. And it will latch. To open it, just push down and slide open and it automatically locks in place. You'll see above here you've got your skylight and your fantastic vent along with a heating and cooling vent, discharge vent here. This fantastic vent operates the same as the one in the kitchen. If you needed to operate it manually for any reason, you can actually do that just by cranking this open and the fan will operate manually. When you're done, you can just close it and it will shut off. So moving into the bedroom, the pocket door operates the same as the one in the bathroom. To release, just press down and locks into place. There's another temperature sensor here. This is for the rear zone or zone two. You have your nightstand with USB plug, 120 volt outlet and additional storage along with the overhead storage above the bed. Another GFCI 120 volt plug there. Manual shades on the back and sides. On the back wall, we have our 120 volt breaker box. Um, the breaker box has all of the breakers labeled, uh, starting at the top and going down water heater, front air conditioner, microwave, rear air kitchen, and um, your main and your inverter. Uh, these are all turned on when they're in the in position or towards the center. If they trip, all you have to do to reset them is to make sure that they go all the way off and then back on to reset. We give spare fuses here. If you have a fuse that um, blows, these are your spares to replace. Make sure that you use the same number, which is the amperage of that old fuse, when you replace it with the new. These are like fuses. They're bigger. They're called mini breakers. They're automatically resetting uh, even this one so that you don't need to change these larger sized ones. The smaller ones here would be the ones that you'd want to check and see if they need to be replaced. If they do, just pick one that's the same size.
This fuse is a manual resettable one. They don't automatically reset. All of the locations for these fuses are given on this decal. This decal gives you the location of the fuse, what it operates, and the amperage that fuse should be. So you can just go down the list and if any appliance isn't working, you'd want to look at that location, find that location here, remove the fuse, and replace it if necessary. Underneath the bed is the storage area for the table leaf. Oh, they are not removable. The bed automatically lifts and stays with the air shocks. When you're done in this storage area, you can just pull the bed down and it sits back in place. Above the bed, you have your ceiling lights, control, reading lights, your backlighting for the switch itself, and then high and low for dimming the lights. On the other side, you have your accent, reading light for the other side, and the same dimming functions. On the wardrobe side, we have hanging closet space. There is a decal on the inside of this cabinet with the list of all the appliances that Numar originally supplies in the coach. So if you need to look at the model and serial number for any appliance, the entire list is on this label. On the back wall, you have another 120 volt plug and more storage in these drawers. You have an AV or audio visual cabinet for your television here. This AV cabinet has satellite prep and all the wires here to connect to your television or your DVD satellite receiver. Manual shade. You'll notice here that there's an exit window in case of an emergency. This entire window, once you follow these instructions, will be removed uh, once these levers are opened, and then you can use this as an escape uh, window. Beside the TV, you have your slide out control in and out. The directions for the slide out control instructions are here. Obviously, we don't want any children to operate that. You have your additional lighting controls here for your ceiling, kitchen, living room, and dresser accent lights. On the ceiling above over here is your CO2 detector. The CO2 detector can be tested just by depressing to make sure the alarm sounds. Press and hold that for one second. You can hear the alarm. If you don't hear that alarm, you'll need to check the batteries. And if they're installed and in place and it still doesn't sound, you'll need to replace it. Here at the, cor the front passenger corner of the coach, starting at the top, you've got your mirror, which does have an adjustment screw here. If the power mirror adjustments aren't enough rotation or orientation, you can loosen this and adjust your mirror manually here and then retighten. Uh, below that, you have your turn signal camera here. Uh, tire inflation information is on the inside, but is also on the tire. Here we have our door latch. So when we open the door, we can latch it here. We have our carefree awning. The carefree awning is 12 volts. It has a remote control to operate it, extend or retract. It also has a manual control in the overhead that we saw earlier. If we move into the door, we just pull the open. You see we have the screen door, which is a magnet attaching to the door here. There's a, a latch here on the screen door that you can, once you close the screen door, 
you can lock the door so it doesn't open. To latch both doors in the open position, uh, you just lift up this plastic latching lever and just lock it in place here. And reverse of that to unlock it, you just lift up and close. Once we have the screen door closed and latched, we can shut this slider. If you look here, there's actually two different locking mechanisms for this entrance door. The lower mechanism locks the handle. The upper mechanism locks the deadbolt. You can see here as I turn the upper handle, that's your deadbolt lock. Um, the key for that is here. That's for your deadbolt. And then the lower lock mechanism is for the handle. Lock is here, unlock is here. And the key for that lock is down here. Uh, above the screen door, above the main door entrance here, you've got your security light. You have your steps below. The steps operate open unless you hit the step switch. And then even if the door opens, uh, the steps will stay extended. So to show you that, I open the screen door, the steps come open. If I close it, the steps go in or retract. If I go in the overhead and turn the switch on that says step, that overrides the action of the steps going in. And when I open the door or close it, they'll just stay out. So I'm going to go in the coach. I'm going to hit the step override switch. And now when I close the door, the steps stay open. So moving back to our first compartment here, our baggage compartment. You can see here, there's a large tank. This is your fresh water tank. Uh, the fresh water tank sensor is here. What you see um, going, it's a strip sensor. Uh, the strip sensor reads the level of your fresh water tank. You'll see another uh, lever here. This lever opens uh, to drain your tank. On the back side here, you'll see a IntelliPower. This is a converter. This is your battery charger. On the side wall here, you have your breaker layout and your fuse panel legend. And each fuse is labeled, and each label has an amperage for that fuse or B for breaker. If you look in here, you can see all the breakers here at the bottom, and your fuses are over on your left. If you remove that to put it back in place, you just slide it in and then close the latches all, all the way around. There is uh, the Xantrex inverter here. The Xantrex inverter can be controlled here or in the overhead above the entrance door. Uh, either switch works uh, to turn it on and off and set the controls here. The interior light can be turned on and off manually right here. And the next door back, you've got more storage you have the light here, turn on and off. You have your wrench uh, for your, uh, your wheels. Just above that compartment, uh, you have your Suburban LP furnace. When the furnace is operating, this gets hot. So if the furnace has been on or is running, you definitely want to stay clear of this. The exhaust gases will come out here. The intake air goes in here, but still that area gets very warm. So 
uh, you don't want to touch that. In the next compartment door back, you have your slide room control at the bottom. You have your tank heater pad control here. You have an additional plug here for your water heater. The module board control up here is for your main screen that's in your hallway. This is uh, the central control board for the uh, touch screen and those uh, functions. Um, when they take place, you'll notice LED lights here on the side. So when something's turned on or off, you'll notice these LED lights will change depending on what you turn on and off. The water heater is here. This is your uh, continuous water heat. The door for this one does open. This is a Dometic uh, water heater. It's LP gas. This is the exhaust uh, and the intake. So we want to make sure that when this is in operation, you can see here it's labeled hot. We don't want to uh, touch that. That would be very warm. You have your side marker here. Again, that's just your awning, uh, your rear wheel. If you look right here behind the wheel, you'll see your rear jack and jack pad. Um, you'll also see a muffler there. That's for your, your own end ge uh, generator, which is in this compartment. At the top of the slide room, you've got your slide topper awning. Uh, that awning protects the top of the uh, room when it extends from debris, uh, rain, uh, weather. Um, before you retract your slide room, if it has a slide topper awning on it, you want to make sure there's nothing above that uh, topper uh, that would uh, be in the way when it closes. Here's your Onan generator. Uh, the generator cover is here if you need to access it. It's a cover that just pops off, has push tabs into the rubber. The same way that you started the generator on the dash switch, uh, you can do here just by depressing. And as the time after you're done, then of course you would just press it in the reverse to shut it off. I didn't hold it down long enough to start it, but we'll try it again. If you'll notice, there are two mini breakers here. There's the off position and the on position. If these are not turned on, the power from your generator will not go up into the coach. So just make sure if you're going to be using your generator that these are turned on. If your generator is running, uh, but you're not getting power in the house, you want to come out here and check and make sure that these are not tripped off. If they are, just turn them back on. Uh, oil level, you want to make sure that you have adequate oil level. Uh, refer to your owner's manual for that. Up at the top is the hour meter uh, for how many hours your generator's been running, right here, your Hobbs meter. And in the last compartment, we have more storage. So here's your brake lights here and here. Turn signals. And he'll put the coach at your emergency flash. Brake lights, that's our reverse or backup light. And 
and your marker lights showing at the top and on both sides. This exhaust uh, tailpipe is for your own end generator. This is your towing hitch and your plug for your trailer is here. Got your uh, ladder to get up on top of the coach. Coming around here, you got another marker light as well as here. Moving forward, you have your gasoline fill here. Just twist. It clicks when it's tight. This is another compartment uh, for your uh, hose, uh, for your drain hoses, um, for your black tank or gray tank. This is another compartment with manual light turning on and off. This is the cord reel compartment. Um, the cord reel, as well as the generator, feed into this box. Uh, the cord reel, when it's plugged in, goes into the automatic transfer switch, and so does the generator. The generator is always the one that's gray, and the, the short cord is black. This box will transfer between the generator power and short cord, always giving priority to the generator. This is our wet bay compartment. Our wet bay compartment contains the house filter. House filter wrench uh, we saw earlier inside in the kitchen uh, drawer area to remove this cover and insert the filter, you'd use your wrench here and loosen this and just drop this in and uh, put this back and retighten. So that's your whole house filter. Just above that, we see another tank here. Uh, the strip sensor tells you the level that's in this tank. The black and gray tanks are here. The fresh water tank is on the other side. This is a shower uh, for rinsing your hoses or rinsing this area when you're done with uh, draining the tanks. There is the hot and cold here. The water pump, to turn the water pump on switch, the switch is here. Just press up, you'll see the LED light come on. Press it again, it will shut off. You've got a fresh water city connection, and this is where you would connect your fresh water incoming hose here. Once you connect that, it will flow into the filter and then into your coach uh, city or to fill your fresh water tank. So when you're done with that, you can close this. Over here, you have a black tank sewage rinse. So once I've drained my black tank, if I wanna rinse the black tank off, I would open this up, put my hose over here, turn that on, and then I would be able to rinse my black tank. In the center here, I have a handle that I can move either on or off. This is called the freshwater tank fill valve. So as long as I'm connected to my freshwater supply and it's turned on and has pressure, it's going to go in. And if I have the handle in the vertical position, it's going to fill my freshwater tank. If I leave it in the off position, it's not going to fill the tank. It's just going to supply my coach with water but not my freshwater tank. You'll notice here, I've got the blue and red drain points. They're the low points for the cold and hot water. If I open these up, what's gonna happen is that line 
Either one is going to drain all the water that's in those lines so that I can uh, winterize the coach. Just a note here, it says if you have a whole house filter, uh, be sure to remove the filter and the housing and reinstall the housing before running antifreeze through it. In other words, if I'm going to winterize my coach, I want to remove this filter uh, so that it doesn't damage it. And then I could reuse it. Now, if you're just going to change it anyway, obviously you wouldn't have to worry about it, but uh, remove this before you winterize. So just to the left of our uh, water compartment control area, we have the drain area. If you look up at the top, we have a pipe that actually comes from our two holding tanks for sewage and wastewater, which is black and gray. You would connect a hose on here, remove this, Put your hose through here and connect it to the sewage outlet drain. To drain the tank, then you would just grab a hold of this handle and pull it towards you. And that opens the sewage tank. The other one opens the gray tank. Once it's drained, you can push them back in place. Store your hose and put your cap back here. In this compartment, you can see we have on the right-hand side here our water pump. Our water pump uh, can be turned on in the water bay compartment or upstairs in, uh, on the panel or in the bathroom or kitchen. There is a small filter device that filters the water before the water goes into the pump. If you take this off, you can check that filter. If it needs to be clean, you can just tap it out, put this back, and then screw it back on tight. If there is debris in there, that can slow down the flow of water through the pump and into your coach. So check that filter uh, every season to make sure you've got a clean filter. There are bypass, hose, uh, bypass valves here. This is the winterizing inlet. So for your potable antifreeze, you would remove this, put it in your antifreeze when it's time to winterize the coach. And you would reverse these valves and let the water pump pull in the antifreeze and open up all of your uh, spigots and faucets flush your toilet so that all of the antifreeze solution goes throughout the coach. When you're done, put your cap back on and reverse the valves. Just behind the water pump, you'll see a, a control. Uh, this control is for the slide room. In this compartment, we have the drain for the kitchen. The kitchen uh, water is collected here, and this is a 120 volt pump that pumps the gray water into the gray tank. So uh, that's what's behind here uh, is a device to catch the water that comes from the kitchen area and put it into the gray tank. Uh, again, here we have another light on and off for this compartment. So we have our battery tray compartment uh, to access the batteries and inspect them. We just unlock it. And now the tray is unlocked, we can pull it out. And we can inspect our batteries here. These are lead acid batteries and the fluid needs to be checked and maintained. And this compartment needs to be kept clean. If you remove any battery and you don't recall the wiring in the back at the top is the wiring schematic for all these house batteries. Just refer to that uh, to put your wires back in the right position and then relock your tray you may have noticed uh, this motor is for your slide room right here 
Just to the left of that, and the next compartment over is your LP tank. You have a gauge here for your LP tank, but it also displays in the screen in the hallway. Your your uh, on your your uh, fill valve is here. The on and off for the tank is here and behind this plastic cover that goes into the house is your regulator, the LP gas regulator. So this compartment is not one that can be locked. So it's always open in case someone would need to turn off the LP gas supply. This is a, this is a full wall slide room. The motor you saw here has another motor at the other end. It's a dual motor, full wall slide. What we talked about earlier is looking at what's called the reveal. The reveal is the gap or the distance uh, between this fascia and this trim. It should be even. If you ever see where this trim is touching or very close, <clears throat> you should make sure that your coach is in a more level position before you run the slide room out. So before you run a room out, check your reveal space, make sure that they're even on both ends at the top and the bottom. After you've checked that, then you would be able to run the room out. This mirror is, has the same adjustments uh, that the other side does here and here are Allen head screws that you can loosen and you can move this mirror. You can tilt it forward, back, or side. The other side left-hand camera is here. This is the camera that comes on when you toggle through the positions or when you turn your left turn signal on. At the front of the coach here, uh, there's a hood latch release on the inside near the driver's seat. We can open the front now. There's a prop rod right here. Once we get that in place and propped, we take a look inside here. We have your braking control, your power brake system, your windshield washer fluid. Um, this is the fill tank for your jacks. Uh, this is the manifold uh, for those equalizers, equalizer jacks. This is the air filter for the engine, and of course your uh, cooling coils here for your transmission and your air conditioning. Uh, coolant fill, this is your HVAC system, air um, and heating, uh, cooling and heating for uh, your dash uh, or cockpit area. We have uh, our Transmission and oil uh, dip, dipstick uh, here. We have the uh, low and pressure, low and high pressure uh, fills for the refrigerant. The refrigerant charge is labeled here. How many pounds? Uh, you have your chassis battery here. When you're done, just latch that back in place. Our prop rod. And if you take a look down here, uh, you'll notice this is the lane mitigation system that's on this coach. This, this gives you the warnings. Uh, and those are things that you turn on and off on your uh, dash. And you can make those adjustments uh, for when you're ready to drive. Obviously, you've got your wipers, your marker lights at the top, your headlights. He's going to do a demonstration of the high and the low beam. Uh, the lights are on now. That's your high beam, low beam. There's a left turn and right turn. And your hazards. All right, and that concludes our walk around for the base star.